This video is going to be about how I preserved and protected uh, this 65 year old vintage lacquer guitar finish. Um, every time you do a uh, restoration or preservation, uh, there are uh, pros and cons. Uh, there are risks and rewards. And this is how I chose to preserve and protect this 65 year old lacquer finish. Had a crack in the top right there that I uh, fixed. I humidified the guitar in the bag with several large sponges soaked in distilled water and the crack sealed up and then I glued it and I put a single cleat about right there. That's where the crack was the biggest. Um, I cut the cleat out of another guitar top, spruce top, and the grains go in the other direction from that. But I think what I really want to show is the finish on this guitar. Uh, I cleaned up the top. After I scraped the glue here with a razor blade and I sanded it all the way to uh, 800, maybe 1200 sandpaper, and then I rubbed it out. But you can see the finish still has all this beautiful crackle in the finish that I didn't remove. Uh, it's just that vintage look uh that i really like i didn't want to remove that but this beautiful glowing color is just amazing i mean this just comes with age and it's hard to come by so so i want to talk about how i preserved preserved the finish on this guitar it's beautiful so these are the products i use to restore the finish on the car and these are um car detailing products, you know, um, don't turn your nose up on them. There's some amazing car detailing guys out there. So uh, let's just go quickly. Meguiar's Ultimate Car Compound, you know, it used its own bag. And that was uh, mostly on the scratch. I'm not the scratch, the crack repair. I rubbed out all the sanding and stuff with that. And then I went over the entire guitar with it. Second was uh, their car polish, which really shined up what the buffing compound removed. And then these two products right here, I'm gonna uh, put a link on there to two amazing car detailers. This is. This is where the sh where the glow really comes from, and the protection. Uh, this Jess Car Power Lock Plus is a polymer sealer, uh, designed to work with all kinds of finishes, but uh, works great on lacquer and these old lacquer vintage uh, cars. Then this uh, colonide uh, number eight four five insulator wax, the combination of these two bonding together. Um, is amazing. The other thing about using these products, uh, especially on guitar tops, do not let them dry. Put them on and get them off and work in sections. Uh, don't let this stuff dry and get on there and uh, don't use a lot of this product. These products right here, if you're doing guitar restoration, uh, probably last year your lifetime. This insulator wax, I've been using these to uh, preserve uh, some some car that I had but anyway this one right here especially just put it on the top turn it upside down and I'm talking I think the entire top of that guitar was covered in two uh, tabs two circular tabs of oil I put it on here turned it upside down held it and then I did it in two places that's all it takes more uh, product is just wasteful, and uh, that's how I did it. Uh, wear gloves. One more note about these car products. Um, what I really like about them, uh, the Meguiar's, uh, all three of these, uh, up to the Jess car, the insulator wax has some carnauba in it, and it smells a little bit waxier, but these things smell good. 
I've used some turtle wax products on, a, on another guitar once, and the smell was awful. I, I couldn't stand it. Um, it smelled like uh, some kind of petroleum product, like a car, and it stunk, and, y and you don't want to play it. Uh, Meguiar's uh, Ultimate Cars products, there's a bunch of them out there, and they've, uh, d they know now uh, these products smell good, or they don't smell bad, I'll put it that way, and some of them actually smell good, especially the interior products. But, um, yeah, all of these, the guitar smells, you know, nice. It smells good. It doesn't stink. It doesn't smell like a petroleum product. So don't uh, worry about that. Um, I'm sure there's some some guitar-specific acoustic guitar finishes uh, to put on it. But these products work fantastic. I'd like to talk a little bit about how I installed the guitar cleat. Since the cleat was all the way down here, where the crack was the widest when it was uh, not humidified, getting my arm in here and reaching all the way down with my hand, the furthest I could get the cleat was about here, which the crack was very tight there. Um, and I didn't want to put two cleats in. I wanted to just get one. Uh, I don't want to get more on this top than I have to. So let me show you how I did it. Uh, I actually used two cell phones. I put a cell phone inside here and I tilted it at an angle like that and I FaceTimed it to myself. The second camera I put over here laying flat with the guitar and I could see. Then I took this pair of hemostats and I put a sewing, not a sewing needle, I, I guess what do you call it, just a, a needle. This is in the... Uh, cleat just a, but anyway it's an example I poked it in there till it stuck then I reached my arm in as far as I could until I got right where the camera was showing me where it needed to be and I put it on there then I released the uh, hemostats and uh, pulled the uh, hemostats out I pulled the sewing needle out uh, the, this, whatever this needle is safety needle pin out and uh after that, after it dried after 24 hours. So if we go back here, the only problem I had was the first attempt. I dried, I did it dry multiple times until I was sure I could do it. And sure enough, I didn't. I stuck the cleat right there. I pulled it up, I pulled it out, and I used Type Bond 3, put more glue on it, and I set it right exactly where it's supposed to be the second time, which I was really happy with. The downside is there's a little dab of glue right there where I attempted the first time. In hindsight, what I should have done was got in there with a the hemostats and a wet paper towel or sponge and wiped that dab of glue off that was there. I thought I'd come in after the fact and clean it with a paper towel after I got, I wanted to get the cleat in because I'd already glued this joint here and clamped it. I wanted to get the cleat in. But like I said, in hindsight, what I would have done was probably uh, got a paper towel and clean that off. I, I tried to afterwards, and that glue is so hard that I'm, it's hard to work in there. So that's so lesson learned there. Um, in any case, the guitar came out beautiful, and the repair came out fantastic. I am really happy with that. Uh, this little, well, not little, this crack goes all the way. I I wonder if I could have cleaned it because the crack is old. It had been there for quite a while, uh, years I'm guessing, because this guitar sat in a closet and it. I didn't clean the crack. I wonder if when it was opened, if I tried to clean it with some kind of uh, something. Not sure what I would have used to maybe clean clean it. Maybe clean some of the dirt off the edge, if. Uh, if that would be less noticeable. Anyway, any comments out there on Luthiers? If uh, would you clean that crack? Is there dirt in there? Is that or is that just the way it always comes out? I've seen cleaner ones. I've seen ones that that are practically invisible.
Well, we have a very nice Avila classical guitar. This was made in 1968. Uh, I got an email from Tom Favilla. It's in very good condition. It's a uh, C8 Solo, made in New York. It's got, uh, I'd say it's in very good condition. It's got a little bit of damage. It's got a crack here in the soundboard that ends at the uh, bridge, which is good. I'll get that repaired. The finish, I don't know if you can tell, but the finish, you can see some of the grain, uh, you know, through the finish. I think somebody put steel string strings on this, at least on the bass strings. I'm not sure if uh, nylon strings come with that same kind of ferrule. The action's high, um, but I think the action was high on these classicals back then. Two and an eighth inch nut with a high action. The action's about uh, 11 or 11 or 10 sixty fourths. Solid back and sides are mahogany. Um, there is a hairline, hairline, very thin crack right there. See if it'll come in. If I can get the shadow right, you can just see it. It's right there. So I'll get that repaired as well. There it is. Kind of ends right there. Get those pleated. So it's not in excellent condition, but I think for its age, um, I'd say it's in very good condition because I've seen these guitars in a lot worse condition than this. The neck looks really well maintained. Original tuners. I, uh, one of the tuners is frozen, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to um, try to loosen that string. I'll just cut it and then pull them off and soak them and nap them or something and clean them. And I'm gonna bag this. I had put a humidifier in the sound hole. But uh, I'm going to bag it in, uh, with sponges and distilled water and uh, try to get that crack to seal up.